In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new study that we have in um, the Bible. And we'll be studying a lot in the book of Exodus tonight. And we'll be going through what we really need to know in the power of the Spirit. Tonight, you identify us, what you've done in us. But all these years, we haven't known who we are. But tonight, raise us up as Josh Groban sings in that song. Raise us up. On, and may we sit on your shoulders tonight to see the world from a whole new perspective as sons and daughters of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. I want to give all of us to begin with a word of encouragement. Amen. Tonight is total encouragement. Okay. Amen. Um, we're going through a brand new Bible series starting now. Priest, prophet, and king. You got that? Priest, prophet, and king. Now, what happened when you were baptized, all these things happened to you. But guess what? You didn't know about it. And now you're over 60 years old and you still don't know about it. You're starting to collect social security checks and you still don't know about it. I got a, a positive word for everybody from God. Everything we're going through now is just a purification, but he's going to come out and he's going to renew us, restore us, confirm us and establish us. That's in first Peter five. So please, Stay with Jesus. We're going to get through this. What are, what are they saying? Another two weeks. And uh, I'll be visiting Lisa and getting her delicious dinners again and uh, Jackie's hockey pucks. And so, I mean, I, I, I got a lot to look forward to. Amen. So we got a lot to, to get going and getting the gospel out throughout the world. Amen. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. Here's the outline for tonight. I'm going to take you through Genesis to show you where you're a priest. And then I'm going to show you an unbelievable anointing of the Holy Spirit you have on you. How many want to know your anointing of the Holy Spirit? Saints, I got to tell you something. I don't want you to look like this. Amen. Turn to the person next to you. You need a faith lift. You need a faith lift. You need a faith lift amen go ahead betty tell him he needs a faith lift you need a faith lift so we need to be um faith lift did you hear me faith lift so we're going to look at genesis and then we're going to show you the anointing that comes upon you and then we're going to show you connected to jesus connected to where you should be now i believe a reason we are locked up huh, whatever that means um we're locked up so you can get this vital information so you can be changed and transformed. Are you ready for the background? All right, this is a background passage. Everybody goes to Genesis. Everybody say amen. Now go to Genesis chapter 2. Everybody go to chapter 2. And I'm giving you, especially you, sister, sister, Hebrew. Amen. She likes Hebrew all the time. So you're getting some good Hebrew tonight. Amen, sister? Sister, you need to say amen so that my Larry can hear it. Amen? Now, so let's go through. Everybody in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. All right, now, how many know when God made you, he said, I'll never do that again? Amen? Never again. When he made you, he said, never again. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden. Now, how do you say garden in Hebrew? Gan. Not gam, sister. Gan. G-A-N. Okay, you got that? It's a big gan. G-A-N. Not a gam. G-A-N. Everybody, now. The word garden in Hebrew means delight. So when you're with Jesus, how many, how many know you're in delight, Bill? But when you look at the world, you just, your favorite song is, oh, 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 oh. And 
this is for people who live across the street from me. Oh, oh. amen. Then he says there, um, put him in the garden to till and to keep it. Now, everybody circle those two words, to till and to keep. This is the first job of your priest. Now, how do you say priest in Hebrew? You say priest in Hebrew, Kohen. How many ever heard of Kohen before? I'm sure you've all been to Jewish doctors and you go to Dr. Kohen. I mean, the word Dr. Cohen is like they're on every corner. Everybody know how to spell Cohen? C-O-H-E-N, okay? So all of us are Cohens. Everybody say, I'm a Cohen. K-O-H-E-N or C-O-H-E-N. Everybody got that? I'm a Cohen. Now, um, you got two jobs as a priest. Right here, put a big star by verse 15. This is your priesthood. Are you ready? This is what you were baptized into. Now, how many, everybody's here basically has been baptized. Is that correct? Now, how many have people, you were baptized, but nobody told you what your role was? How many really would like to know the powers that Almighty God has given you? Anybody want to know that? Nobody, just me? Brother Peter, you want to know that? All right, now, so here's your job as a priest. This is just a little, uh, everybody put down Cohen. All right, I'm, now I'm talking to you. Here comes your Hebrew. Are you paying attention? You want Hebrew. Now, the first word to till, the first word to till in the Bible is abad, A. B A D. Everybody say Abad. I'll repeat because some of you say, Could you give me that again? A B A D. Now, when you till the ground, are you all priests? Yes. Does the New Testament call you priest? Yes. Where does the New Testament call you priest? First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. When I see the Mormons walking along, my first thought is, oh. My second thought is, they wear the sign, and they wear their signs called elders. How many ever seen them when they wear the sign called elder? The word elder in Greek is the word for priest. Did you know that? Now, how do you say how do you say priest in Greek? Presbyteroi. We get the word Presbyterians. Did you ever hear that denomination? Presbyterians. All right, you ready for your spelling word? Press P R E S Press Bit P B I T Press Bit. Tier, T E R I O, Presbyterial. So these are these are the elders. So every time I see a Mormon doing that, I go, You got that? P R E S P E I T E R I O, Presbyterial. So what's the Jew? Kohen. What's it in Greek? Presbyterians. So Technically, you could wear a sign that says, I am a priest. By the way, that wouldn't go too well when you wear it in your church, because guess what? We have an ordained clergy, and they don't recognize too much you're a priest too. Amen? Now, the word priest means sacrifice. So that means everybody has to be near the sacrifice what sacrifice are we all near to everybody okay we're near the cross amen how many times did jesus die for us once and once for all how many sacrifices go on daily once and once for all how many masses are there in the world one and one for all 
How many priests are, now here's the shocking question. How many priests are there? One. But all of us are joined to the one. All right, now, so if you're going to till the ground as priests, are you all priests? Are you all priests? Shake your head yes. Were you baptized? Shake your head yes. You are a priest. That means you have direct access to the sacrifice. Whoa. That means every one of you can stand on Calvary and look at Jesus. Secondly, that means, which is even more mind boggling, so to speak, every one of us can go where the, the ancient high priest called the great high priest, you can go in to the holy of holies. If we, we were all back into the tent scene, you could go back in and you could worship God legitimately in front of the Ark of the Covenant. How many would like to have done that? When the Ark of the Covenant is discovered, 2 Maccabees 2, at the end of time, you will be able to go up to the Ark of the Covenant, look inside, and see the original Ten Commandments of God with Aaron's rod and the manna. Now, that manna has been in there a long time. What happens to manna after all those thousands of years? Something tells me it's still going to be beautiful when it's finally opened up. Do you agree? So now, sisters and brothers, you now what does it mean to abad? Here comes your Hebrew sister. Pay attention. So how many know you have direct access to, the, to God? Amen? That's why I got a little nervous growing up because they would always tell us, now we always believe in the intercession of the saints. Amen? And that's good to believe in the intercession of the saints. And we need them, especially Mama Mary. And by the way, in this day and age, everyone is asked to ask Our Lady of Sorrows intercession. Our Lady of Sorrows intercession. Um, and that's great. But you can't be fixated without being fixated first on the one sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So go to that one sacrifice, because as priests that all of you are, you go to the sacrifice. Our Eastern Catholics, how many ever heard of the Byzantines? Or maybe you might know another group called the Greek Orthodox. What they do is they give the babies first communion right away. They have everything together. So they do not have this sacrament separated. So they don't have first communion there. Because when you're baptized, you already got it. So they made their first communion. So when you see those kids, there are no communion classes or confirmation classes. Now someone said, well, that sounds pretty good. So what does it mean to um, cult, uh, to abad? Are you ready, sister? Number one, to abad, this is really going to be mind-blowing. Now, the abad, when, when you think about till, what, what does everybody think about till? The ground, right? It goes way beyond that. So till means, number one, cultivate it. What do you got to do? Take your coat, uh, cultivate. How many ever heard of a hoe, H-O-E? You got to stir it up, right? So you got to till it. You got to till it. Amen? Now, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, around verse 13, Jeremiah 2, verse 13, Jeremiah says, Oh, my people, your ground is hard. Do you remember when it's really winter time here in New Jersey or Boston, not not y'all down in Florida or y'all down in in um, in Texas. When it's really really hard ground, you can't move, right? When we sin, we priests become hard, and you can't move anything and put any seeds into people. Right now in Jeremiah two. Jeremiah says, 
what has become of our church? We've become hard and there's not a lot of growth in the United States and not a whole lot of people coming in. Amen. It seems to be very hard and people are not really listening to the gospel. So Jeremiah 2 says, the second thing is your, your wells do not have any water. Where is the water you need? I was just reflecting, I was preaching to the people today. I said, when Peter was preaching the Pentecost sermon, he had to preach it at the bottom of Mount Zion. We recently discovered something there. Did you ever ask the question, how did Peter and the others bring in 3,000 people to get baptized? 3,000. What do you need for baptism, everybody? Water. You know what we just discovered right down by the wall? We just discovered a mikveh. M-I-K-V-E. That's where you did your ceremonial purity washing before you went up. Because right there, there's the stairs going into the temple that Jesus walked on. So if we're going to be priests, you have to go through daily. Listen, priest, you have to go through daily washing. Amen. I know they're always telling us now to wash our hands. How many feel like your skin's ready to fall off? You wash it so much, right? Or maybe you have those little, you know, things on your finger. You wash it so much. So we have to be as priests. We have to be absolutely cleansed. Now, when you go to heaven, you want to go? You want to go? To go to heaven, Revelation says we have to be, chapter 22, we have to be absolutely pure. How many need some more time to get there? All right. So now, what is, as a priest, what is your goal? I got to be pure. If your mouth is not pure, hmm? change it if your eyeballs are not pure hmm change it amen if you're if your outtake take is not pure change it the second thing about tilling the second thing is it means keep working a priest a kohen is always working in the vineyard amen now even if you're 75 or 76 and your husband's name is, you know who. Do you got to keep working? There's no retirement from being a priest. Do I hear amen? Third thing, and this is absolutely phenomenal. Turn to the person next to you and say, this is really good. All right, now, when you are a priest and you abad, you go into worship of God because you're using who you are and you are moving in the spirit every time you move in the spirit it's an act of worship to god so the first thing priests do is abad a-b-a-d the second thing that god says there uh, genesis chapter 2 verse 15 i love this word because we use it so often the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden. What does Eden mean? Delight. To till it and to keep it. Now, let me give you the Hebrew word for that. How many ever heard somebody, I want to put a kibosh on things? You ever hear that expression? I just want to kibosh it. Does everybody know that comes right here from the Hebrew? The word is kibosh. K. A. V. A S H. You got that? You got the Hebrew sister? K A V A S H. Put the kibosh on. All right, turn to the person next day. Put the kibosh on it. When you put a kibosh, now remember, are you a priest? 
Are you a priest, sister? Are you a priest? Is the guy next to you a priest? Yes, he's a priest. Is your husband who's not there a priest? Yes. Are you a priest? Yes. Yes. Now, here's what it means to kavash. Everybody got Abad down? Now, if you're a priest, it means uh, this is this is ready to dance around your your husband's night sister now if you put a kavash on somebody you're bringing them to the footstool of god you go to the footstool and means oh this is really good you better start dancing when you kavash somebody it sounds like what we say it in english it means you put your foot on the neck of your enemy. What does Mary do? Mary puts the kavash on the snake. Do you remember that? Are you getting this good stuff, sister? So kavash means if I'm going to keep it, I got to make sure there's what happens on the ground there's interesting creatures aren't they so what happens is i put my foot on the neck of the enemy coming against me number three when i am about keeping what god wants me to do he i bring everything under control everything has to come under control make a right go all the way into the book of mika Mika chapter seven, priest. All right, are you my priest? Are you holy priest? Amen. Are you a priest, sister? Are you a priest, brother? Amen. Is the young lady upstairs a priest? She's a priest. Amen. Chapter seven of um, chapter seven of verse number nine, nineteen. Mika. Uh, some of you call it Micah. I'm giving you the Hebrew uh, correct pronunciation. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. Are you all there? Micah chapter 7, verse number 19. When we put the kavash on people, here's what we say as priest. Are you all priest? You keep hear, hearing me say that. You've got to know you're a priest because you haven't been told this growing up, even though the reality is you are priest, prophet, and king. Amen? Now, the reason why these three go together, which we're going to find out in a moment, is because there's a magnificent anointing on you. Now, as soon as we come out of this Corona special, I believe you precious saints are going to go forth using your priesthood like never before. And here's what I want you to pray with me. God, use me in this revival that's coming forth. Amen. Use me in this revival coming forth because it's time for you. Amen. And I'll, I'll put a black hat on, drive a little yellow bus, and I'll pick all of you up. Amen? We got to get ready for the revival of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, priest? All right, everybody with me in Mika 719. Isn't that a good verse? Are you there with me? Mika says, Micah, he will have compassion upon us. He will tread. See the word tread? Everybody underline the word tread. See the kavash? K-A-V-A-S-H. K-A-V-A-S-H, K-A-V-A-S-H. He will kavash our iniquities. What's your iniquities? It's when you've done any sins. What does a priest always deal with? The sacrifice that forgives sins. So what are priests concerned about? The sacrifice that forgives sins. So what, I, what am I concerned about? What's my main job? I want to preach the gospel to the world that they'll know Jesus Christ as the way, truth, and life. How many ways to heaven are there? One. 
I want them, the whole world, to know Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I want to put the kavash on people. Did you see it right there? Uh, Mika 719, he will tread. See that? See what Mary does when, when the snake comes out? Are you, are you enjoying this, sister? So was the Blessed Mother a priest? Of course. Of course. And so he will tread our iniquities. How do you say iniquities? Avon. Avonot. The worst possible sins under the foot. See the feet again? Now, remember I told you many times, when you're free, you don't wear sandals. You don't even wear, like this one couple has, house shoes. <laughs> they call slippers house shoes. Can you imagine such things? So what do you do when you're free? When you're free, anybody like bare feet? Nobody? Except when you're in a hot beach in Florida, make sure you put your house shoes on because, I mean, your skin will stick to the bottom of the sand, baby. Amen. So now we can see here, you will cast, look at verse 19, all our sins into the depths of the sea. That is one of the greatest passages in the Bible on priesthood. Casting. Now, what happens when all of our sins are cast into the sea? Now, remember, saints, when you have your sins forgiven, it's truly forgiven by the blood of, the, of Jesus. Number two, when your sin is forgiven, please remember this. Your sin is what? Forgotten. How many can remember that? Now, how many know when you get older, you get kookier? Everybody shake your head yes. You get a little kooky. Now, when you get kooky, you start saying to me, and you make me kooky. I remember when I was 17, I did this. Amen. And I just want to be forgiven because I'm dying in five minutes. Well, I'll send you off with a blaze of glory. Amen. So don't be kooky. Your sins are forgiven and they are what? forgotten good news now another meaning of kavash the number meaning of kavash is this is so good <laughs> excuse me i gotta get up and dance around the room when you keep and subdue something as priest your rule goes down to the lowest level that you make sure every, you're at everybody's level I do not become a priest and I'm above you. I become a priest. I'm with you. Jesus is the great high priest. Did he do a good job doing that? Yes. He was never, even though he is above us, he is, but he knew how to walk with us. So that was the kavash. It means you go around and you touch people's lives so much so with that compassion of amica 719 guess what happens when you do that precious saints guess what happens people really can take to you because you're on their level priest we've got to identify and bring everyone to the sacrifice of the cross do i hear amen do you like kavash? Now, the thing is, we show as priests, when you do the kavash, you show unbelievable kindness. We, we just read that word, uh, compassion, right? Now, I got to ask your forgiveness, because sometimes we priests don't show you that. We think we're above you. One man said to me, I was evangelizing him after I got my car ripped up a little bit. He said to me, oh, you must be really smart with all your degrees. I said, well, really nobody asked me how many degrees I had. And I said, you know who's smart is the one who knows how to go to heaven. That's the smart one. 
He, and he smiled. I said, I hope you know how to go to heaven. And in case you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. His name is Jesus by repenting, by coming to the cross. So what does it mean to be a priest? It means we can learn from one another. A priest is a teacher. You teach people by your incredible life. Now, on the way back to Genesis, we're going to show you, priest, how you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Are you ready for this? You want to see something amazing? Amazing. All right, go back with me. We're going to go all the way back to Exodus, but we're going to make a pit stop. Everybody go to John 17. John, the 17th chapter. John 7, we're going we're gonna to give you a lot of cross references. John 17. This is, uh, is this good stuff, Simi? John 17. We're, we're going to look for the words, I have kept them and I keep them. Have you found it there yet? Let's see, John, I kept them. Go ahead, go, where is it? I keep them. All right, look at verse 11. Everybody look at John 17, verse 11. Are you there? John 7, see the word keep? Now, when you look at this passage, this passage is called the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Say you had interesting people living with you. Anybody have interesting people living with you? Now you really got to live with them. You want to show them the door a long time ago, and now oh, yo, yo, you're stuck with them. But you want to help show them the door. Now notice what Jesus said, 12 people came into my house and I've kept them, except the one who is destined to be what? Lost. He did not want to be the priest. So this is the high priestly prayer. So everybody circle there, verse 11. You can see it there. They are, I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep, see the word keep? Keep. Guard them, shamar in Hebrew, S-H-A-M-A-R, shamar. Now, let me, let me take you to another place in John 17, and then we're, gonna, then we're gonna go, we're gonna focus in on giving you your anointing. Are you all anointed? Now, when you were baptized, you received chrism on your forehead. Do you remember that? Some of you are only this big. Some of you have great um, grandbabies now. That means your years are, are gaining. And you want to see the chrism on their head. When you put the chrism on your head, it is so phenomenal of an of a oil that the, the Bible sings of its praises, the oil of gladness. But I see, I've done a lot of baptisms, my lawyer, but the parents are not ready to keep them in the oil of gladness. Amen? How many have kids that look like they've been hit with a Mack truck instead of the oil of gladness? And there's an oil of glad wind to act as a... You see all these things. So how many have seen people with the oil of gladness? And then we have the oil of gladness. Priest, you put on the garment of praise. Sister, that represented Mary. Now, there's only one time recorded that Jesus sent people out with the oil of gladness. And he had to get a glad wind. The oil of gladness is only mentioned in Mark 6. In Mark 6, 
is where the miracles explode. And Cosmolina likes this word, kratos. This is where the kratos, the mighty deeds of God. In today's first reading, Peter said, right on the Pentecost, right by the mikvah, right where he's going to baptize 3,000 people, he says, the kratos, the great deeds of Jesus were shown right here. Now look at, everybody still with me, and then we're going to go, we're going to spend the rest of our time probably into next week to understand that you, this, this is who you are, a priest. I mean, like being a priest so far. Amen? We're getting near, by the way, 100 people tonight. So praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Now, everybody go with me to chapter 17 of John. Please look with me at verse 17. Verse 17. John, sev John 17, 17. Everybody say John 17, 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Everybody see that? Your word is truth. Everybody see that? This is called biblical, mystical marriage with the most high God. Now, when you all go to heaven, you're all going to be married. And the partner you got now, see ya. So Lisa, tell him goodbye. See ya. Amen. Sir Charles, tell her, see ya. Betty, tell him goodbye. Amen. See ya. See ya. Because you're not going to be married to that person in glory. Amen. Now, go back with me and we're going to spend the rest of our evening or maybe into next week. Um, because I, I, we're going to go. Now we're going to spend a lot of time in Exodus. Everybody go all the way back to Exodus. Go to chapter 29. Exodus 29. Did you get good stuff, sister? Sister, did you get good stuff? All right. Go to 29, Exodus 29. Exodus chapter 29. Now, look at the, look at the chapter. Ordination of priest. Who is this? You. I'm going to give you... Four words when you became a priest. When did you become a priest? When you were baptized. Okay. I'm going to give you four words to represent what's going on in your life. This is going to make you very, very happy. Amen. Are you ready? Now, to be anointed. With God, are you all anointed with God? What oil was placed on you? Chrism. To be anointed with God, the word, I'll give you, you sister, sister, it's, you're getting Hebrew again. Are you ready for your Hebrew word? She always likes Hebrew. Masa. M A S A H. Say Masa. Masa. Not matzah, masa. I mean, some of you want to go eating now. Masa. M A S A H. Now, when you're anointed by God, priest, prophet, and king, what happens to you? The word masa means it's smeared on you. Now, what we do in the church when you were baptized, you got a little dabaduya. You know what I would want for my kids? Pour it all on. Amen? You know, look at your kids today. You told me all their stories. Say, I think they, they shortened the oil on this kid's head at baptism. Amen? So now, what does it mean? to be anointed 
It means smeared. I want to give you tonight four unbelievable words to tell you of your baptism. Are you ready? Okay, you're getting good stuff? Number one. Number one, when you were baptized, the first thing that happened to you is, I'm going to give you four words. Everybody ready? And then I'm going to give you a corresponding scripture. You got it? The first word is anointed. Everybody write down anointed. When you were anointed, it means literally oil has been poured on you. Look at chapter 29 of Exodus. We're going to spend some time in 29 and 28. Look at 29 and go to, with me to verse number 7. Exodus 29, verse 7. We now have over 100 people that have joined us. Praise God. Chapter 29, verse 7. Everybody there? Now, you've got to underline this, and these you are getting four words of your priesthood. And that's why to be an ordained Catholic priest is outrageously beautiful. Amen? <laughs> he says to us, and you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head. So where did the oil have to go? Right here on the head. When you got anointed, where did the oil go? On your head. But what should have been done is they should have taken kind of a smear job. Because when you look at your kids now, they said, I think they didn't put enough on the back of his head. Amen. And anointed him. Now, what happens then, if you hold your spot, we're going to be right back. This is called your entrance into the life of the Holy Spirit. This is called the entrance into your life in the Holy Spirit. The cross reference I want to give us is in Luke. And you heard about this about a million times. So you can go there or you can just listen to me. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Let's read this within our brand new information that we got. Luke 4. Verse 18, Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. All right, now, what did we just learn about? All right, now, number one, Jesus is declared as a priest. Do you see that? Number two. What does Jesus there mean? By quoting Isaiah, he says, I've been anointed. So what happens is his whole head was smeared with oil. You cannot see Jesus the way you should as priests until you recognize he is Messiah. Messiah means the anointed one. That's why he cried over Jerusalem, because guess what? They did not recognize him as Messiah. Are you getting this with me? Until you personally, priest, recognize he is your Messiah, you're not going anywhere. Now look with me. The spirit, the Ruach, Adonai, is upon me. And then because he has, from the head, I just got all this oil down. When did Jesus get all of that oil all over him? At his baptism. Hello? Who hovered above him like a, there was the dove entrance into the Holy Spirit. If you want to have, as soon as we get out of Corona, a life as a priest should, you've got to know your entrance point. 
oftentimes when I do spiritual warfare, I always say to people, know when the evil one entered in. Know when you enter into a life as priest into the Holy Spirit. Now, when you have this, this is really good. Are, are you getting good stuff? As priest, what is a priest supposed to do? When you read Hosea 4, Hosea chapter 4, when you are priest, are you all priests? Yes. What are you supposed to do, preach? Especially you. What are you supposed to do? Yes, you. What are you supposed to do? Preach. Are you preaching? I know you're preaching because your kids go, oh, oh, oh. And how we know the mothers preach more than the fathers, amen? And oh, 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 amen? So now Jesus has that oil. What was it little? When Jesus was baptized, I got goosebumps telling you this. The oil of the Holy Spirit was all over him. Now, anybody, any lady ever put on cosmetics? Did you ever put on lipstick? Did you ever put on powder? When you put on the cosmetics, how many have ever oiled up your face before? I know in Corona, don't touch your face. How many have ever oiled up your face? When you oil up your face, it makes it shine. When Jesus had the Holy Spirit fall on him, that's why he could look at people and they couldn't get their eyes off of him because his face was so different. Let me give you, let me give you scripture. Jesus' face was so different that as Isaiah 53 says, he looked like an ordinary person. But when that oil was on him, he looked like an ordinary person. But boy, did he glow. When you look at sainted Mother Teresa, she was a marvelous person. And she didn't look physically a little one stooped over. But when you looked at her, baby... She just glowed and glowed and glowed and glowed. Now, as priest, what are you supposed to do? The second word I want to give you, if you go back with me to uh, Exodus. Everybody go back to Exodus. Okay? Back to me to Exodus. The second word I want to give us is this. It's sanctified number one is anointed as priest you are sanctified that means when did you become a priest everybody no. baptism now did this happen to you how many had interesting parents if we shake your head yes now this is what they should have done to you set you apart for what you are going to do in god in your life not that you be a baseball player, not you be an actor, actress, and you can still do that, but you had to be separated for God. Do you think our parents and godparents separated us for God? Do you think they really took kind that we we're modest and we we're pure in speech? I'm not blaming your parents, they just didn't know. The second word is this anointed. You've got to be anointed. And number two, you got to be sanctified. Everybody say sanctified. Mm -hmm. Now look with me, please. In, again, Exodus 29. Everybody with me in Exodus 29. If you go all the way down to verse number 36 and 37. 36 and 37. In order to be sanctified, as priest, we need to always be near the offering. What offering is that? How many offerings are there? The once for all offerings, as the book of Hebrews says. 
there's only one offering. Do I hear amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus died once and once for all. Now, as priests, are you all priests? My priests, my brother and sister priests. He says to us there in 40, 36 and 37. And every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also, you shall offer a sin offering for the altar. When you make atonement for it, you shall anoint it, consecrate it. And seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. And the altar shall be most holy. Where the priests always belong near, the altar. People ask me how I'm doing. And you know what I keep saying? I want my church open. I want to see my other priests with me. Now, notice there, it has to be, if you're a priest, it has to be continual. How often? Every day. Can you miss a day? I'm not saying you have to be in church every day, even though some people live across the street and come late. I'm not saying you have to be in church every day, but you have to desire to be near the altar and go to the sacrifice. As priests, are you all priests? Yes. What should you want to be in the first rows, not the last row? And you don't come late and sneak in the last row like I saw some of you. You get up front. Amen? Get up front. Do I hear amen, priest? Now, how many have ever been in, you've seen the procession, you see all these priests walk in. Do you like when you see that? Notice they, they already have to go where? They have to go up front. You are holy priest. So this, the next thing is you have to con continually be close to the one sacrifice. Amen? Are you ready for the third word? So we have word number one, anointed. Oh, let me give you another scripture from Exodus 29 about priest and sanctity. If you go to chapter 29 of Exodus, please go with me. Now watch, this is really, really good. Verse 43 and 44, Exodus 29. All right, ready, priest? Therefore, oh, this is good. Turn to the person next to you. This is really good. Amen. Are you getting this? Is this good? This is really good. Are you getting this? Are you getting this good stuff? Are you, sister? Sister, are you getting this? Alabama, are you getting this? All right, now, what does he say there? I will, look, underline verse 43. I will meet with the sons of Israel, and it shall be sanctified to my glory. Now, as priests, you are allowed to meet with God. Somebody say, whoa, is that good? Now, I say that's really good because when you meet with God, I told you many times in Exodus 25, you meet God only in mercy. So what do you do as priest? You only meet your God in mercy. And so it shall be sanctified. See the word sanctified? Now, when we want to be sanctified by God, an amazing thing happens. God's glory is shown. Now, underline the word glory there. Remember I told you what the word glory in Hebrew is? Kabod, K A B O D. Everybody say Kabod. So that's the glory of God. How many now, priests? You're all priests? How you doing? I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging. Uh, are you hanging in there? That's not a priest. When you show the glory of God, when you show the glory of God. Now look at verse number 44. Exodus 29, 45. I love this. I will consecrate the tent of meeting. 
when you and I meet, God says, your tent's consecrated. Now, look where you live. Look at that bedroom of yours. Ay, ay, ay. Look at your apartment downstairs while your kids are upstairs. Look at that apartment when you live all by yourself. Look at that apartment down in the south where you say, y'all, what, what kind of apartment do you have? Is that the meeting place? Is it consecrated? Now, everybody look around your room, ready to pass out? There's your consecrated meeting place. Because you are a priest living there. And guess what? Your whole room is consecrated. Somebody say, wow. 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 So when you go to bed tonight, what should you sing? Heaven, I'm in heaven tonight tonight i've just met a savior named jesus amen do you like my singing i like it too amen remember you still nobody has bought my cds yet i i am wondering what is going on so please look it, i take credit cards tonight and and, and buy and of course um you want some for pentecost for everybody on your on your pentecost list do you realize, priest, where you go to meet God is consecrated? Wow. Wow. I told you the story many times. I've been invited to bless people's houses. And I say, interesting Buddhas in there and Draculas and hand coming out of the grave. And I said, son, take that down. He says, no, I like it. I said, suffer and goodbye. A amen. You are priest. You should have you should have the glory of God. Amen. Now look look at verse number 44. I will consecrate the tent of meeting. Remember how to say that in Hebrew? O hell. O H E L. How many have beautiful bedrooms? Do you want me to come inspect them all? I'll put my blue gloves on and will come and inspect that where you live as priests with the most high god where god will meet you and i love this now look at look at look at the next line and altar how many have an altar in your room what does altar mean everybody sacrifice you got it the sac the altar is where you meet god and you remember what he has done I'm still in verse 44 of Exodus. I will, uh, Aaron also and his sons, I'll consecrate to serve as my priest. Okay, how many like the idea that you're a priest? Did you know how important you are yet? Are, are, are you getting this? Now, the third word we have, anointed. What's number two? sanctified now this one you already know this is mind-blowing the third word is hallowed how many ever said the our father hallowed be thy name what does it mean so wherever i walk priest i make things holy whoa our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Everything, when I walk in the area, has to become holy. Do you remember when the explorers would come across from Europe to the U.S.? They would plant the flag. Do you remember that? And they would plant the flag, and all of a sudden they say with that flag, this belongs to when you live where you do you say this belongs to the lord jesus christ do you do that priest all right i want you to scare all of your kids your room belongs to jesus christ mom it's my room but i pay the bills so it belongs to jesus christ how many want to see your house belong to jesus christ a priest lives in this house now consecrated 
Uh, go back a chapter. Go with, stay with me next. Let's just go back a few paragraphs. Go to chapter 28 of Exodus. Chapter 28 of Exodus. Uh, and go with me to verse 38. 28, 38. Exodus 28, 38. And here's what it says to us. Everybody with me? It will be upon Aaron's forehead. Aaron shall take himself any guilt incurred in the holy offering, which the sons of Israel hallow. See hallow? See hallow. You've got to make them holy, even though they may not be holy. Go and plant your flag. Now, I told you when you got your interesting kids, when they're out of the room and you know they're like 100 miles away, you put miraculous medals underneath their, their, their uh, you know? you got to make it holy, baby. Amen? So now it says there, it shall come upon Aaron's forehead, and Aaron shall take upon himself any guilt incurred in the holy offering which the sons of Israel hallow, underline that, as their holy gifts. Whoa. Now, how many love your kids? Anybody love your kids? On a good day? Shake your head yes. Melissa, are you shaking your head yes? That's your kid. Shake your head yes. And then you say, hallowed be that kid. Amen? Hallowed be that kid. One day in Florida, Vincent, I was in West Palm Beach, and I said, you know, God's calling you to be a Catholic to one kid. He says, I got a girlfriend. I said, I can fix that. And he says, I'm not even Catholic. I said, I can fix that too. So hallow every relationship, hallow everything you're doing. Everybody underline that? See the word hallow? I'm in verse um, um, 30, uh, 38. Boy, what a verse that is. And notice, it shall be upon his forehead. Now, ultimately, at the end of times, what are we going to have? The mark of the beast in the, in the forehead or the hands, or you're going to have the mark of the cross, that you belong to Jesus. When you got baptized, what did they do with you? What's the first thing to get you in? They put on you the mark of God. Do you remember that? Now, so when you get your grandbaby baptized, sister, when you get that grandbaby baptized, you make sure you're paying attention, especially with that guy next to you there. You make sure that goes right there. Amen. Indent it on them. Amen. That be upon his foreheads that they may be accepted before the Lord. And finally, the fourth word. You got all the words? Anointed. Sanctified. Hallowed. What's the fourth word? We already looked at it. Um, it's dedicated. It's uh, consecrated. I write number four, consecrated. Consecrated. Now watch this. This is really, really good. Turn to the person and say, this is really good. Now when you go with me to make a right, go with me to Exodus 40. See, we're not traveling too far tonight. Exodus, the 40th chapter. Exodus 40. Just give you a little tiny background on Exodus 40. This is the last chapter of Exodus. It's when the Holy Spirit comes upon the whole thing. And it's the same exact thing that happens to the Virgin Mary. When Gabriel says the Holy Spirit will hover on you, you could see that exact expression used in Exodus 40 about the Virgin Mary. Are you paying attention, sister? You got this? It's the exact same thing that happened. Now, here's a little background for you. They completed all the furniture that was going to be inside. When they arranged the furniture, it formed like a cross on the inside. 
mystically it formed like a cross. Here's what the Jews believe. Nobody put the furniture in there. It was all on the outside of the tents. And when they woke up in the morning, all the furniture was on the inside. And the furniture formed like a cross on the inside. Now, go with me to chapter 40, verse number 9. Everybody with me? Say amen. amen. When you're with me, then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and that is in it. There's the word, consecrate it. And all the furniture, see the furniture? You know, the 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 showbread where it's gonna be, the table, the the incense altar, the um the menorah. Consecrate it, but what are you gonna do? How many have ever seen a church be consecrated? The bishop has to come in and smear your altar with oil. Do you know your oil has been consecrated like uh, your your altar has been consecrated like you? You got the picture? You got oil on you. That altar you go up to, some of your Eucharistic ministers, I you get the picture? You're going up to an area that has, has been consecrated in oil exactly like you. So every time you go to communion, do you like going to communion, sister? Sister, when you go to communion and you walk up the aisle, you're going to a consecrated, holy, holy, holy object that had the same anointing you did. Because you are a what? Now watch this. You can Because you're priest, you can only be near that which is. Ready? Hello? I'll say this slow. Because you are a priest, you can only be near that which is anointed. Somebody say, wow. Now, the rest of your life, to be consecrated, to be hallowed, to be sanctified, to be anointed, here's what happens. I want to give you four closing things. Can you believe we're almost done? Did that go quick? What happens then is, this is this is so good. Uh, sister, sister, you got to get up and dance around Larry now. Sister, now watch this. Because if you know you're a priest, You will be godly like Jesus Christ is. You will be pure as he is pure. First John 3. Go to First John 3, verse 2. This will blow your mind. First John 3, verse 2. First John 3. Verse 2. Do you see it? First John 3, verse 2. That's number one. When I become the priest, going to where I go to my altar. Everybody see First John 3? I've always been looking at that and staring at my whole life. There's got to be more meaning to it than that. Of course there is. And the Holy Spirit's just got to work with this mind of mine. He says there, are you with me? Beloved, we are, uh, are you with me? First John 3, verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he appears, we shall be like him. Now, you're going to see Jesus, aren't you? When he's standing there looking at you, baby cakes, Guess what you're going to look like? Like he is. Why are you going to look like him? 
because you've been anointed, because you've been sanctified, because you've been hallowed, because you've been consecrated. You're going to look exactly like Jesus. Can you handle that? Are you excited about that? Now, everybody get up and dance around the room for heaven's sake. You're sitting around too much. You're going to look like Jesus. Are you getting this? Even you, sir, in that little apartment there. You're going to look like Jesus. Amen? How many can handle? You think you're good looking now. Whew. Wait until you see the glory that's going to come through you priests. The second thing I want to share with you in closing, wrapping up. He, you'll be godly as he is. First John 3. You will always want to do it God's way. God will find the way. Amen. You will always want to do it God's way. Amen. Number three. You will always want to do new things for the Lord. Isaiah 43. The new ways of God. And when, when Corona's over, baby, I want to do new things for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to do new things for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Even if you're in your 80s, sir. Even if you speak Korean, sister. You got to get out there and announce the gospel. And you too, if you do Italian with the bajou. You got to get out there. Announce the truth of the gospel. In season and out of season. I look like him. I'm a priest. I will do it his way. Number three, I must do something for him. And number four, I have decided I'm going to be totally devoted to Jesus Christ. Amen. So now, who am I? Look out, baby. Look out. Bill's on the way. Whoa. Do we got time for another thought? Just another thought. You want to hear another thought? Is this good stuff? Now, can you see why I got excited about this? I want you to go with me. I want to show you something. Go back to Mark 14. Our last thought. Can you believe that went so quick? Are you with me in Mark 14? Are you getting good stuff, sister? Sister, are you getting good stuff? All right. They're looking at me. They're just staring at me and smiling. Okay. Now, everybody with me in Mark, let me show you something. Here's a new insight. You ready to get up and dance? Amen. Middletown will never be the same again after this insight. Ready? Mark chapter 14. Verse number 8. Mark 14, verse number 8. Mark 14, verse number 8. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burying. Now, you know what she did? Remember the, the lady who anointed Jesus? Because she made Jesus right there. Everybody put a circle there. She made Jesus the anointed one. Now, did he ever receive an anointing of that kind of oil before? No. What kind of anointing did he get at his baptism? We saw the Holy Spirit in the Father's words. Do you remember that? Yes, do you remember that? Now, let me show you something that's off the charts. Are you ready for this, sister? Sister, are you ready? Brother, are you ready? What happens is as soon as she anoints him, Jesus never got that kind of anointing before. And, to, and ladies, it takes a woman. Amen. Now watch this. She, as soon as that happens to her, an amazing, this is amazing. Do you think I'm excited about this stuff? This is amazing glory you're getting. She, as soon as he does that, receives from her. And you think it'd be a man. You think it'd be one of the apostles. You think it'd be a big mucky muck? No, no, and no. Who is it? It only takes a woman. Amen? 
Now, what happens is, is in chapter 42, in chapter 42, here's what she did. Put a star there. At this moment, Jesus becomes the anointed suffering servant of Isaiah 42. And guess who did it? I only takes a woman. And here's what Isaiah 42 says. As soon as she said it, go, go with me as we're done. Isaiah 42, everybody with me in Isaiah 42? Well, get going, sister. Isaiah 42. Are you getting good stuff tonight? You getting good stuff? Go to, go to, is it good stuff? Melissa, it's good seeing you. I, I, it's um, uh, Isaiah 42, verse number one. Look what that woman did. So put that down. She in, ignore, inaugurated this verse in Jesus' life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was she doing? She was putting the oil on him to the greatest priest there is, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister, are you seeing this? Here's what it says. Isaiah 42, 1. Behold. Bum, 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 bum. Behold. My servant. My abed. Now, what is the abed got to do? The bed's got to do an abad. Remember, a bed is the word for servant, E B E D. And what do you got to do when you're a priest? You got to abad. So a bed's got to abad. You got it? A bed and abad. This sounds like Hindi, doesn't it? A bed got abad. Okay. okay. I, I, in, in Hindi, it means prosperous. Do you know these words, Brian? Brian is such a Brian. So, uh, so I'm trying to teach him Hindi too. So, so the abed has the abad. Everybody say that with me, with me. The abed has the abad. The servant, Hebrew for the servant, abed, abad, A-B-A-D. Behold my servant whom I, behold my chosen and whom my soul delights. God, God says something unbelievable here. Abba Father looks at Jesus and says, my soul. How can God have a soul like that? What does that mean? Do you know, sister, the soul, the explosion of the inner part of God, his very thoughts are on Jesus. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. To be continued next week, our new series on priest, prophet, and king. Dun, 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 dun. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon us that people here will rise up to their priesthood and use it very, very, very well to the explosion of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' precious name. Give us holy priests right here in Jesus' name and all over the country from Texas and, and South Carolina and North Carolina and, and Florida and and, and out west in New Mexico and California, wherever people are right now hearing, hearing this, and may they be born from above and, and use their priesthood, priest of God, rise up. Even you, sister, out in western New Jersey, rise up. Rise up, O men and women of God. Rise up, O priests of the Most High God, and you will blow down the walls of Jericho. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good stuff? Any questions?